short time ago, one of my subscribers, Larice, uh, hello Larice, thanks for your question, asked me about printing on textured fabric. Now, and I just wanted to show you as a start this piece of fabric. Now, this is an off cut of an old tablecloth, I'm guessing. It's a damask cloth, it's cotton. You might be able to see the um, part of the patterning here and some of the patterning there. And I suppose the thing I wanted to say really about printing on textured cloth is that it's actually quite difficult. You can see here, well, difficult in the sense of being able to get a good coverage. You can see that um, if you're just running a roller over it, it can skip um, and pick up some pieces and not others. And I think the other thing is to get decent coverage, you're either going to have to dilute your uh, paint down or you might even have to thicken it. And either way, the dilution works quite well because you might be able to see here. Um, you can see some of the damask pattern. But overall, printing onto textured fabric is challenging. I'm not saying don't do it. It might be something that you explore and have some wonderful results with. But I'm probably going to stick for the time being to print on plain and smoother fabrics. Now, Larissa's question actually made me then think of something totally different, which is how do I get texture onto my fabrics? And I just want to show you uh, some pieces I was playing around with the other day. And unfortunately, what happened was I did all this filming and it turned out there was a technical hitch uh, with what I was filming and Whilst the photos turned out okay, I can't really use the footage uh, in the format that I like. But I just wanted to talk to you today about the textures, some of the textures I've achieved, showing you these examples from the other day. And then I'm actually going to get in and show you how I achieve these textures. So the first thing was that when I thought about texture and pattern, Often getting a texture into a piece of fabric can mean that you end up with a pattern. So I'm, I'm thinking that texture and pattern are actually very closely related things. And the results you're looking for may vary from person to person. So in this case, it's a very textured piece. It's actually showing you the texture of a piece of hessian, something I dragged out of our um, garden shed actually. But you can see there's a lot of texture. You can see the texture of the warp and weft threads. You can see the texture of the threads on the outside. Equally, this is a texture caused by rolling a piece of twisted cord over the fabric. And yes, it gives a texture, but it also gives a very strong pattern. So that's why I'm thinking to myself that perhaps that's not such a good uh, definition or a way to define things, whether it's texture or pattern, I think they're very closely related. So here are some other things I did. So this was a texture I took by rolling an egg beater of all things, not my kitchen one, my studio one, across the wet ink and lifting bits off. And again, a much more what I'd call textured piece which is actually the hessian and I've printed it twice. I've printed um, this original textured pattern was just directly onto my fabric, just the hessian making marks on my jelly plate and then I put some thread over the top of the plate and reprinted it. Now the other thing which I often bang on about is the textures you get unexpectedly. And to me, these are often the best textures in terms of what I want to use my fabrics for. So I'll just pull these off and show you the piece underneath, which has 
completely blown me away with all the textures on it. And of course, this is the piece of fabric I used to clean up after myself, to clean up the jelly plates. So some of it was very dilute paint that I've literally just sprayed on and wiped the plate clean. Some of them you might recognise. You might see this print here and recognise that it's actually when I took the excess paint off this plate and just put it over the top. So I'm getting all sorts of interesting uh, combinations, different textures depending on how much paint was left on the plate, whether I just rolled off a lot of paint or just a thin amount of paint. To me, this cloth is very usable. I also love these ones. I'm not sure how I would use them all, but I have different ideas about the sort of pieces I might make and that I would use these in. For the sort of art I make uh, with my textiles, I personally like something that's a bit indistinct. It doesn't have a literal uh, meaning. There's not an image in it. That's very helpful for the way I work. And hopefully in the not too distant future, I will actually make a video showing you what I do with these pieces. Like all of those excellent TV chefs, I've gone ahead and prepared some pieces of fabric already so I can just focus on printing and showing you how I'm developing different textures in the work. The other thing I want to achieve with this is to show you uh, different types of textures, whether you want a really intense colour, whether you want a subtle texture, a subtle interplay between your pieces or whether you want something really bold and bright. So what I've done, uh, this is the fabric I'm using. It's a very fine cotton lawn. It's a sort of a bluey grey colour, a bit hard to tell really, quite indistinct. I've then gone on to print a variety of acrylic um, paints onto them. This uh, brown paint, it's actually uh, transparent transparent red oxide um, is, as it says, a transparent colour. I've had some problems uh, printing with these in the past, mainly because it's very hard to get a strong contrast. I've also then got here a yellow. And whilst it doesn't say so, I think from the what results I've had, this is a semi-transparent colour. And these two colours down here are opaque colours. So there's a bright aqua green and a phthalo blue. So as you can see, uh, all different brands. I really don't worry too much about the brands that I use. Um, obviously, these are more professional, these two. Um, that's a student grade one, and that's the cheapest acrylic paint you can find from the $2 shop. It's not really a problem as long as you get the result that you want out of your printing. The other thing I'll say about these two paints, and I've already uh, mixed these up into tubs, is that these have got fabric medium mixed into them. And there's my other one. So I mix these on a one-to-one -one ratio, uh, one proportion of paint to one pr the same proportion of textile medium. And, of course, all the details of these will be in the show notes uh, underneath the video. Today, I'm going to focus on this piece of hessian. Very exciting, I know. Literally dragged out of our... Um, shed and I'm going to see what sort of textures I can get using this with the array of colors that I have and using uh, the print off the plate in a few different ways. So I'll get this tidied away and I'll get started. Right so I'm just about ready to get started. What I'm going to do with most of these plates is take 
two prints off each of them. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some ink on. I'm going to put my hessian onto the surface and then I'll take a print as it is. Then I'll pull that off and take a second print. And I'm just telling you this in advance because it's going to get really boring watching me do this. So I'm going to put it on hyperlapse so we can just whiz through the technical bit fast and then you can see the results. We'll spend a bit more time there. I just realized that I had some unused pink paint sitting there and I thought I might as well mix it in and see where we go with it. Um, it's mixing the colour a little bit. It's taking some of the heat out of that super hot pink, turning it into a more, I don't know, a slightly dirtier pink. So again, I'm going to do the old Hessian, Hessian thing. In fact, I might do a corner this time rather than the full thing. And I'm going to try it on a piece of my yellow fabric. That's one of the things to think about when you're doing this. When you start playing around, you come up with different ideas all the time. It's really worthwhile exploring them. Uh, don't try and get so caught up, particularly if this is the first time you're trying something like this. Don't get caught up in the end result. Um, play around and see where the process takes you. So I'm thinking that's looking pretty good. I can see the paint coming through. It should be fine. I'm going to pull that one off. Wow, look at that. And I've even got some nice texture in through the middle as well as those amazing edges. Right, I'm going to pull this off. I'm going to do a couple of things. I'm going to try this. I've got a green fabric. I'm putting it over the pink. I think I'll get a good, I know I get a good colour contrast out of these two colours from the work I did yesterday. I'll just see how we're going. Lift up a corner, peel it back. Fantastic. Love it. Really gorgeous. This time I'm only going to put part of the print on it. I want to see if I can get a sort of image here, but not all the way across. There we go, two different layers there, some very different sort of printing that you can see. I like that combination, I think I'm going to play around with that a little bit more. Well, here we are at the end of a very successful morning's printing. I'm really happy with so many of these prints. I've had a really good play. I've got lots of fascinating textures. I will show you after this a series of photos which has got each piece in it, but I just thought I'd pull out my favourite five from each of the different background colours that I used. So this was the plain fabric. This is the fabric with the transparent red oxide. This is the opaque green the semi-transparent yellow and the opaque blue. And I think you can just see how much fun and how many different things I could get out of this one old dodgy piece of hessian. I've got to be careful, it's actually still a bit wet. It's really amazing what you can achieve, but I think the main thing again, just to reiterate, is to play. Don't go in expecting that you're going to know what the outcome is be open to what happens on the day 
I just love what's come out of it. I love the textures. I think you can see different types of textures. I know that each of you will have your own favourite. You'll have a favourite colours. You'll have a favourite approach. You might want something more subtle. You might want something stronger. That's up to you and that's why we play. Because if we don't play, if we don't experiment, we'll never know what it is that we really like. Before I go, I just wanted to make a shout out to all of you who've subscribed to my channel. Now, I know it's not the biggest thing on YouTube or Instagram where, you know, tens of thousands of followers, blah, blah, blah. Yesterday, I got my 101st subscriber. I'm just so thrilled and I just wanted to say how much I appreciate the fact that you've come online, you've joined me here and just thanks. Thanks. I'll see you next time. Radio. Bye. Mm -hmm.